Despite being the seventh largest city in the United States, many visitors say this place has a small town feel to it. The weather is sweltering, but the food is even hotter. Whether you're taking a road trip in a nearby hill country or pigging out on some barbacoa in a city. Start a game of Loteria and crack open a big red, cause we're heading to San Antonio. Jacob here, welcome to Destinations Explained, a fun series I do that dives into destinations from around the world. If you haven't already, like this video, watch till the end, and comment any places I missed. The naming of San Antonio and the founding of the settlement occurred on two different days, 27 years apart. A small native community known as the Yanawana had already settled in the San Pedro Springs area by the time Spanish expeditions arrived in 1691. In honor of the feast day of St. Anthony of Padua, the first Spanish explorers named the river San Antonio. The city was officially founded in 1718 by Father Antonio Oliveres, who would soon establish the Alamo. In 1731, Canary Islanders formed the Villa of San Fernando de Bayar and established the first regularly organized civil government in Texas. For the better part of a century, things were pretty chill, despite the growing opposition of Spanish rule and the support of Mexican independence. During the Texas Revolution in the 1830s, San Antonio was the site of several battles, including the Battle of the Alamo, where 189 defenders held the old mission against some 4,000 Mexican troops for 13 days, ending the rebellion in favor of the newly formed Republic of Texas in 1836. After Texas entered the Union, there was rapid growth as the city became a servicing and distribution center for the Western movement of the United States. Many of the city's early architectural and cultural elements remain these days, allowing tourists to visit the historical sites in San Antonio and see into the city's storied past firsthand. Today, San Antonio has a population of around 1.5 million people, with a total metro population of around 2.5 million people. In the summer, the weather can average a high of 96 degrees Fahrenheit to an average low of 74 degrees Fahrenheit, while winter temperatures average a high of 64 degrees Fahrenheit to a low average of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when you hear the name San Antonio, what do you think of? That's right, the third best Texas rodeo and chafed thighs along the hot river walk. But if you're weird or actually paid attention to my history lesson, you probably thought of the Alamo, a historic Spanish mission found conveniently in the middle of the city. Although I hold a special place in my heart for the Alamo, the other missions of San Antonio are often forgotten. Mission Concepcion, Mission San Jose, Mission San Juan, and Mission Espada. These four missions and its beautiful landscape make this national park a must-see. San Antonio Missions National Historical Park the Archdiocese of San Antonio owns and operates portions of the four missions within the park, and the park itself contains 84 historical sites along the San Antonio River. The San Antonio Mission Trail is a great alternative to taking a car to see it all. From the Alamo in the north to Mission Espada in the south, the river walk is about 10 miles long. However, the distance between the missions that are actually in the park, Mission Concepcion in the north and Espada in the south, is only 7.5 miles. Other than Espada, you'll have to travel on connector trails and lightly used city streets to reach the missions straight off the river. Standard bikes and e-bikes are available at San Antonio's B-Cycle stations at each of the four missions. Continuing three miles north along the same river path, next to the Alamo downtown, we reach our second stop of the video, which exemplifies what makes San Antonio unique among other major American cities, the Riverwalk. The Riverwalk is a San Antonio treasure and the largest urban ecosystem in the nation with sightseeing, shopping, and food. Tucked quietly below street level, it provides a serene and pleasant way to navigate the city. Explore by foot along the river's walking path or jump aboard a river barge for a ride and guided tour. There's a wide variety of restaurants to pick from, particularly those with a beautiful riverside patio. But if I had to pick just one, it would be Domingo, a modern tribute to South Texas cuisine. Pro tip, the river may be green and smelly, but if you jump in, there's a good chance you'll get superpowers. The next stop is the largest Mexican market in the United States, which is located in a downtown three block outdoor plaza surrounded by shops and restaurants, Historic Market Square. Mi Tierra and La Margarita are two of the most well-known eateries in the area. 
but you can also find a variety of snack and specialty food stores in the market as well. Market Square is the place to be every weekend of the year for live entertainment, delicious food, and fun for the whole family. Not to mention shopping with its unique multicultural merchandise and wide variety of vendors. Spend some time pursuing the wares of more than 100 independently owned shops offering a variety of specialty goods. Similarly to the Riverwalk, you can stroll the market with an open container in tow. So enjoy some day drinking, you filthy degenerate. What was once a thriving brewery complex is now a family-friendly and compelling historic district brimming with chef-driven eateries, unique shops, and a lively outdoor market, the Pearl. In this district, you may notice the Emma, a boutique hotel converted from a 19th century brew house, which stands as a landmark in the area. It features 146 rooms in addition to a library, bar, club room, restaurant, and grocery. The Pearl District, at 22 acres, houses some of the city's finest dining establishments, while the food hall at Bottling Department is ideal for a more relaxed meal. My personal favorite is the Pearl Farmer's Market, which features local farmers and ranchers on Saturdays and artisans selling one-of-a-kind pottery, woodcrafts, and more on Sundays. Now, you might be wondering why I've recommended so many outdoor activities in such a hot city, and whether or not this final tourist destination will provide some relief from the Texas sun. And to that, I say, don't be such a little bit. We finish up with a 343 acre urban park that is a beautiful, serene place to enjoy the river, wildlife, and overall relaxation, Brackenridge Park. The park itself is a typical space that doesn't offer much, but the surrounding park district is where the action is, like the San Antonio Zoo, the Du Zam, and my favorite, the Japanese Tea Garden. What began as a pit created from its years as a limestone quarry and cement factory, the Japanese tea garden is now a beloved jewel in a San Antonio's cultural landscape. This stunning zen garden is home to a 60-foot waterfall and ponds teeming with koi along with shady walkways and stone bridges. Now let's head to the nature and recreational section of the video. You could start your outdoorsy day by grabbing some breakfast tacos from the soon to be mentioned Tolaco Mexican Kitchen, or you can make a smarter choice with today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. A healthy cereal that tastes too good to be true. If you're like me, you check a second bag just to bring the world's best sugar-free cereal. I start my day off right with a bowl. The frosted flavors, my favorite. I may even just bring it with me to go on my adventure. No, Jacob, not like that. That's better. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code VENTURE at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com venture. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use the code VENTURE for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com venture to save $5 today. Now, back to the video. Our first nature spot is a botanical garden, and if you're still in the Brackenridge Park area, you might as well check it out. It's 38 acres of trails, native plants, a glass conservatory, and a cafe, San Antonio Botanical Garden. Overall, you'll need about two or three miles to explore all the exhibits and gardens, like Frida Kahlo's Oasis, Texas Blue Bonnets, and the annual Christmas Lightscape event that goes on for almost two months a year. Several stunning glass conservatories form a ring around a pond filled with flowering plants and a stunning panoramic view of downtown San Antonio. I feel like people wouldn't expect a botanical garden to be this cool in a city like San Antonio. In fact, I think this is my favorite in a whole country. Just in case I haven't made it clear, this city can get scorching hot. Thankfully, the natural spring-fed pool at this next spot will be a welcome relief from the heat at San Pedro Springs Park. You'll find your typical walking trails, sport courts, and picnicking here at the second oldest park in the United States. But the real draw is the San Pedro swimming pool. You know how most public pools have zero trees, melted plastic chairs, and chlorine infested water? Well, this pool is the complete opposite of that. The large spring fed pool is only about five feet deep, but thanks to nearby cypress trees, it stays surprisingly cool even in the brutal heat of the summer. On summer weekends, the pool naturally attracts a large number of visitors, so if you want to avoid the crowds, just visit on weekdays in the middle of the day. 
40 minutes to the northwest of the city is a 12,000 acre wilderness that protects the city's drinking water with a tranquil park that offers both multi-use trails and guided canyon hikes. Government Canyon. There's more than 40 miles of trails, perfect for hikers, bikers, and backcountry campers. The Joe Johnston Route to Overlook Trail, a 6.5 mile loop with modest elevation gain that passes the Zeiselman House, built in the 1880s, 110 million year old dinosaur tracks, a prehistoric midden, and a breathtaking vista. And did I say 110 million year old dinosaur tracks? Yes, yes I did. Government Canyon is home to the only known dinosaur footprints on public land in Bayhart County, which scientists believe were made by Acrocanthosaurus and Sauroposcidon dinosaurs. While San Antonio and the surrounding area are known for their scenic hill country landscapes, visitors shouldn't overlook the fascinating sights to be found beneath the city. Visit one of these spectacular caves close to the city to ramp up the excitement level on a day trip. My pick is the Natural Bridge Caverns. There's the adventure tour, which involves being roped into a 160 foot well shaft and climbing, crawling, rappling, and exploring with only a helmet light. Or keep it chill and spend the afternoon on two feet by taking educational tours of Natural Bridge and other nearby caverns. Discover some of the most impressive speleothems and other geological formations in the world at the largest commercial caverns in Texas. There's plenty of other attractions outside of the cave, including the Twisted Trails Obstacle Course, a 60-foot tall playground featuring vertical rope ladders, double beams, and lily pads across its four levels. Next door is Natural Bridge Wildlife Ranch, a huge zoo that offers up-close and personal encounters with imprisoned animals. And if you think the wildlife here are depressed and that this place is overall immoral, well, you'd probably be right. For a more ethical stop, 35 miles north, you can visit the Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation Establishment, who's certified by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. They rescue orphaned, injured, and displaced wildlife and return the majority to the wild. On a more positive note, our next destination is one of the many charming Bavarian villages brimming with German history and architecture in the United States, loaded with a hell of a list of things to do. New Braunfels, Texas. You can visit the lovely Landa Park, complete with playgrounds, walking paths, and the Landa Park Aquatic Complex, a compact but enjoyable water park and a natural spring. Up the road from New Braunfels proper is the town of Green, home to amazing restaurants and Texas's oldest and most renowned dance halls in the world, Green Hall. Or you can partake in one of my all-time favorite activities and go tubing down one of the two spring-fed crystal clear rivers. In case you're unaware, floating is less about chilling out and more about seeing who can slam the most white claws. Essentially, it's a large floating college party at all times. For many years, Tex-Mex restaurants have been a U.S. staple, and it should come as no surprise that San Antonio's food scene is diverse when it comes to Mexican food. If you're in a mood for a delicious Mexican meal, there's no shortage of options in a city. Here's three different kinds of spots that I personally enjoy, starting with Taquitos West Avenue. Okay, real quick, picture a taco. Does it look like this? Or how about this? Maybe it looks like this. I try my hardest not to gatekeep on this channel, but there is only one kind of taco, and it is this, the street taco. A corn tortilla, preferably two, with cheap but flavorful meat, cilantro, onion, lime, and a side of red and green salsa. This is the way. Taquitos West Avenue is just one of many restaurants in San Antonio serving delicious, traditional Mexican street food. You can get whatever you like, but if I had to choose, I'd get a cabeza barbacoa and an El Pastor. And the sliced cucumbers and radishes on a side are a sure sign that this is the real deal. If you're in the mood for a more traditional Tex-Mex dining experience, complete with frozen margaritas and as much queso as you can handle, then head on over to Tolaco Mexican Kitchen. Whether you're here for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you'll find dishes made with ingredients you won't find at other local Mexican restaurants. As for classics, huevos rancheros, migas, and tacos a la carte are all available in the morning, while tortas, quesadillas, entrees, and more tacos round out the dinner and lunch menus. They even have sopes, a thick corn tortilla-like mesa cake that serves as a base for a variety of fillings such as meats, vegetables, and salsas. Afterwards, relax with a cup of cafe de olla and an order of fresh conchas. 
pink conchas, aka the best conchas. This last Mexican eatery has a vegan and gluten-free menu of Tex-Mex fare and baked goods, so I might as well bring it up for the health-conscious plant eaters among us. At Viva Vegeria, the menu offers a variety of nachos, flautas, soups, salads, and more. As for me, I'd order the fried avocado tacos or the chicken mole enchiladas. The tamales are a must too, but you'll probably want to pre-order them because they're only sold by the dozen and will definitely sell out. They're also BYOB, so you can eat healthy and get smashed. Chef Johnny Hernandez, the proprietor of the well-known Mexican restaurant La Gloria, runs a hip eatery with burgers, hot dogs, loaded fries, and booze with a Mexican influence. Burga Teca. El Pastor burgers, chili con queso burgers, chilequillas burgers, you can't go wrong here. Order any of those with a side of mole fries and you'll be in heaven. There's also a full bar serving beer, wine, and mixed drinks like margaritas, cantaritos, and sangrias. Burgateca is conveniently located on the river in between the Alamo and Mission Concepcion, making it possible to visit all three attractions in one go. Nothing wrong with getting a little buzz on your bike ride. Moving on, we have a wonderful, albeit somewhat pricey, new American restaurant and a beautifully renovated filling station that serves charcuterie and exquisite entrees. Bliss. Bliss is an upscale American restaurant that features a menu that changes frequently to highlight seasonal and locally sourced ingredients. Start with their famous oyster sliders, crispy fried golf oysters, candied bacon, buttermilk chive biscuits, brown butter hollandaise topped with chives. And for dinner, try the sea scallops or the duck foie gras. They're only open for dinner from Tuesdays to Sunday, so make sure you plan accordingly. Even though San Antonio isn't widely recognized as the best city in Texas for barbecue, that doesn't mean there aren't excellent barbecue joints there. So let's talk about Reese Bros Barbecue. Everything you'd want from the pit is here. Brisket, pork, ribs, chicken, and sausage available by weight or on a sandwich or taco. Hell, they even have barbecue inspired tortas. And of course, they have all the traditional sides you'd expect from a Texas barbecue, like potato salad and beans, plus some regional favorites like poblano mac and cheese and pickled veggies. If you prefer to dine in and it's not too hot, there's plenty of outdoor seating to check out. Next, we have a spot that should be on the top of everyone's list for dinner, or even just a few cocktails before a night out. With its precise modern Italian dishes and a true Italian pasta chef making house-made pasta every day. Battalion. You can't visit here without trying their famous spinach dumplings with walnut, prosciutto, and truffle cream. You should also try the Parmesan herb crusted lamb chops with roasted garlic and white wine cream sauce, which is a personal favorite of mine. Despite being located in a repurposed firehouse, the atmosphere is elegant and the setting is perfect for a romantic evening. Only complaint though is that they don't let you slide down the fire pole, so kind of a deal breaker. Lastly, we have a black owned eatery known for its jerk chicken and pork by the pound, jerk shrimp and grits, whole steamed fish, and braised oxtails, the jerk shack. The amazing Jamaican cuisine of Chef Nicola has been a staple in San Antonio, Texas for quite some time. And they just recently relocated from their former, more modest West Side walk-up location into a full brick and mortar establishment. Start with a three piece of fried or jerk chicken seasoned with their secret blend of spices, along with some of the sides like mac and cheese and collard greens. And wash it all down with the Jamaican ginger beer and wrap things up with a banana pudding or rum raisin brownie if you got room. For coffee, we have a West Side warehouse that serves as a co-op and incubator for new businesses and shops, serving all your favorite coffee drinks and specialties. Shotgun House Coffee Roasters Close to downtown, this coffee shop with trendy interior and mixed furniture is ideal for grabbing a coffee and hanging out. Using their own freshly roasted beans, they create unique beverages like honey coconut and lavender cream lattes, in addition to all your traditional coffee and espresso options. Next, there's another coffee shop about 10 miles north of downtown that has been roasting its own beans since 1979, making it San Antonio's longest continuously operating coffee roaster. What's Brewing Coffee Roasters? The baristas are experts on the various types of coffee available, and the selection of whole bean and specialty blends is fantastic. Like many cafes, this one offers books and board games, but did I mention that they also have two rooms packed with pinball machines? With almost 40 pinball machines, this coffee roastery is impossible to ignore. Just don't forget your quarters. 
All gimmicks aside, let's get into some sweets. Now, if we're gonna talk dessert in San Antonio, then we need to talk about panaterias, or Mexican bakeries. The city is teeming with genuine mouth-watering shops that anyone in their abuela would love, but I went with Bedoy's Bakery. The pan dulce, or sweetbread, at this San Antonio institution, which opened in 1961, is as beloved now as it was then. You can get sweets like conchas, marranitos, and cuernitos, as well as savory dishes like menudo, tamales, and barbacoa. As a general rule, anything that's pink, full of sugar, and Mexican is delicious by default, so use that to your advantage. Moving on to the nightlife and bar scene section, if you're still looking for restaurant recommendations, there's a brewery I adore where you can sample both local crafts and enjoy delicious eclectic fare. At Kunstler Brewing, this neighborhood brewery serves draft beer and food like charcuterie, sandwiches, and German-inspired fare, tucked away in a quiet suburb, making it ideal for hanging out and playing games. Try some of the most popular beers, like the Kashmir Hefenweizen, which has hints of bread, banana, guava, citrus, and flowers, or the Chamuco, a spiced beer brewed with chocolate, vanilla, three kinds of chili peppers, and a touch of cinnamon. Now, if you want something a little bit more exciting than a brewery in a neighborhood, then why not hit up a drag show? We have a rooftop bar with chic furnishings, a sweeping panorama of the city, and an extensive drink menu located in San Antonio's Museum District, Paramore at the Phipps. Although the restaurant's strict dress code, overpriced drinks, and extensive reservation requirements put me off a bit, my friends and I enjoy coming here for one thing and one thing only their Saturday drag brunch. From about 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., for less than $20 admission, you can get your buzz on in an exhilarating show in which the MC walks the room, joking with the customers and putting on performances with the other drag queens. There's a small food menu and some refreshing drinks, and the decor has heavy Alice in Wonderland vibes. However, since the food is mid and the drinks are expensive, honestly, I'd recommend this place strictly for the drag brunch. So make sure you eat before and perhaps even pregame. Just don't forget to bring some extra cash to tip your performers. Next up is San Antonio's hippest Riverside Hangout, which is perfectly decorated with a variety of flowers and plants in a lush beer garden, serving comfort food and booze. Elsewhere Garden Bar and Kitchen. Whether you're here on a perfect day or braving the Texas sun, the plentiful fans and shaded seating will keep you comfortable. Kind of. You can bring your kids and pets and enjoy weekend live music and other forms of entertainment, as well as take photos in front of Instagram-worthy works of art. The bar serves a variety of mixed shots, as well as their signature White Claw Margarita and frozen drinks served in cute plastic pouches. Sometime this year in 2023, Elsewhere hopes to open their new six-acre second location with a 45-foot Ferris wheel, a secret garden speakeasy, and a greenhouse for weddings and events. These guys know how to make a cool outdoor hangout. Next, we have a bar with a no-menu concept, where skilled bartenders make one-of-a-kind cocktails according to your specific tastes. The Modernists Ever since I mentioned that bar Idlewild in my Charlotte video, I've been fixated on this concept. In fact, my up and coming video goes even further on this idea. You should subscribe if you're interested. The bartenders at The Modernist have years of experience in the art of mixology and can make a drink that is tailored to your specific taste when you visit their cozy and secluded establishment. Whether you prefer a strong, bold drink or a light, fruity cocktail, the bartenders can create something that you won't soon forget. If there's a particular drink you enjoy, you can even have them make their own version of it. It's basically like using OpenAI for bartending, but instead of writing the script for me, it's getting me drunk. And that's just a joke. I definitely write my own scripts. Next, there's a low-key bar with a bit of a cheesy vibe, ideal for meeting up with pals and getting the night started with some beers and margaritas. Bombay Bicycle Club. You'll find BBC on the edge of St. Mary's Strip, known simply as The Strip, which is home to a wide selection of bars and clubs catering primarily to a rowdy and youthful crowd. There's pool tables on the inside, good vibes on the outdoor patio, and a food menu if you still need to get some dinner in. Margaritas come in a wide variety of flavors, and the bar also features daily deals and happy hours. And if you want a bar hop, Bombay is conveniently on the fringe of the strip where all the action is. Lastly, we have another low-key bar located seven miles north of downtown, a friendly neighborhood vinyl spinning, cocktail slinging, vintage dive bar heaven, the Bang Bang Bar. 
There's a variety of vintage pieces of furniture, arcade games, and a pool table, creating a cool and eclectic atmosphere. There's a selection of unique cocktails and shots to choose from, such as their signature cucumber chamoy shot. While I would recommend Bang Bang for its good food, I much prefer the hot dogs at the Dogfather, who collaborates with Bang Bang, which is right next door and is open until midnight every night. Yeah, it's not the healthiest option, but I mean, what's better than a hot dog at 2 a.m.? Just me? So there you have it. If you enjoy a good sweat, a good meal, and a good stomach ache from drinking too many frozen margaritas, then you'll love San Antonio as much as I do. I make surveys here on YouTube to let you the people pick the next city, so subscribe and keep an eye out for the next one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and while you're down there, comment which place I should cover next.